Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Scott Pilgrim vs. The World from 2010. Scott Pilgrim is an amazing visual spectacle. It's beautiful, it's insane, it's crazy, it's kinetic. The cinematography, which was done by Bill Pope, is cinematic in a way that I don't know if we've ever gotten to see from Edgar Wright except for this movie. This was his biggest budget he ever had to this point at least. Maybe he'll have another one. And you can see what he can do when he has all the toys in the toolbox. I love this movie for that. And I love seeing images from this movie almost every day on the internet. All those images, I think when I watch the film, there's so many, it's almost like I feel like I don't get to stay on them too much. So it makes this film incredibly rewatchable because you want to see more of those images and you almost don't get enough time with them. And he's bombarding with so many like captivating awesome cinematic images that I think when you're watching this film you're often shocked at how many there are there's so many that it's like a film that has that one cool shot this film has like 20 or 30 films worth of shots is what makes up the cinematography. Edgar Wright is one of our greatest visual stylists, particularly with comedy. We don't have a lot of directors who can visually do comedy and action as well as he can. I love Edgar Wright. I love his films. Anytime there's a new Edgar Wright movie, I'm excited. I have to see it in the theater. I think I've seen everyone in the theaters. I've seen everyone but Shaun of the Dead on opening weekend or around that. And seeing this movie in theaters was this overwhelming kind of almost amazing amazing experience it felt like unreal but I think there's a huge division between his American films which would be this and Baby Driver and the Cornetto trilogy and not just because those are English and the other ones are American and stuff also because I feel like in his English films there's much more of a sense of a comment on that culture of English culture of a reality to it that he naturally understands that I feel like he doesn't have as much in America. It feels like more like he's being more of a stylist than a stylist working within a real world. Scott Pilgrim, granted, is his only film that's adapted from anything. It does have a different feel than the rest of his filmography. I'd say Baby Driver has more of a sense of reality than Scott Pilgrim does. And I like what Edgar Wright does with this film. And often, especially when I first got it on DVD, I would just have it on in the background quite frequently. And it's kind of more of, I would say, a favorite kind of a movie than like a good movie. And I know people are gonna get mad about that. And I understand how people attach themselves to this film because Scott is very much, is not the same kind of protagonist you expect in this film. He's very much appealing to the kind of person who would see this film and the kind of power fantasy of being something like that and how it uses video game and comic book imagery probably better visually than any live action film probably has before or since. And he does it in such a kinetic, like lovely way, like especially with the typography, like comic typography that goes throughout this, how he moves visually with the actors and the camera and everything. Something like thousands of camera setups to do this film, but just the logistics of doing all these things and the timing of things. I mean, it's really just awe inspiring. I think people sort of underappreciate how much work goes into all the shots in this film and it's very much a labored over kind of a movie and I don't want to act like anyone was lazy I think this is an impressively made motion picture he's not really commenting on I guess hipsterdom or who this person is necessarily he's kind of just doing this kind of weird style exercise adaptation and it almost exists in a film that like a film dork would obsess over like speed racer like popeye robert altman's popeye like cult movies that don't necessarily like work but are interesting experiments and i think scott pilgrim is maybe the most enjoyable interesting experiment i've ever seen it just has such a great flow to it you want to keep watching it as i was watching it i did want to go through it now, I think maybe probably one of the problems with this is that I've always been too old for this movie. I was not, I think if I was 14 and I saw this movie f for the first time, it would blow my mind. My like, steam would be shooting out of my ears and I would be like, kept going back. But I was like in my mid twenties, I'd kind of already gone through a lot of the Scott stuff at that point. I saw this in theaters. It's been nine years. I'm obviously older. It does make me feel like I'm watching something that's maybe way too young for me. Had I had more of a nostalgia for it, 
I would maybe be a little nicer to it. But I think one of the issues with this film is that I don't necessarily think it's saying as much about these characters. I think the thing was Ramona's not very well developed. There's a ton of great like smaller character actors who kind of build up this film, particularly like Anna Kendrick and Kira Kalkin and Allison Pill, Jason Schwartzman and Brendan Routh and uh, Brie Larson, who uh, really pushed this film up. In some ways, I, I, I think Michael Sarah, you know, this was kind of his last lead ever. For the, for the most part, in terms of a main wide release, it would be in Crystal Fairy about three years after this film. But for most mainstream audiences, this was sort of it for him. And I do sort of like his kind of animated cartoony style to it, but I don't think they ever really get to the heart of the character the way that, you know, in Hot Fuzz or Shaun of the Dead, I understand who the characters that Simon Pegg are playing very well. Same with his character in World's End. They're very definable and they're very much played in that way to those rules to it. And Scott Pilgrim feels almost too aloof. Now I like that, I think that works for the flow of the film and the themes of the film, but I think you get less of a sort of personal experience. And I think that's why this film, although visually I think is striking and amazing, very well-made film, I think story-wise, I don't think is able to kind of bridge that. Now, I've never read the comics, and Brian Lee O'Malley, I, I know he's influenced quite a few people, and quite a few people I have known throughout my life, but uh, I've never really gotten into it, unfortunately. I just have never read it. Um, and maybe that's what the comics, like, I don't know. It feels like there's kind of a kind of protected seal over it. Something like Speed Racer or Popeye, as well kind of have the sheen over that this has where it's definitely getting a cartoony vibe and that's not something i think a lot of films can do without looking necessarily cheesy this is an authenticity to that but it doesn't have an authenticity of the characters or saying something about how these people are young and young love or anything like that certainly i understand you're going he's battling the seven evil exes and showing you know how baggage if you go through people's baggage through their relationships which i don't think is necessarily like a universal kind of thing for all relationships but maybe is the case with ramona and uh, scott pilgrim it was more about the journey and less about the point or goal of what they're really saying about these characters i don't necessarily know if scott changes and i i sort of think the larger arc would have been maybe him with knives which was originally the ending it was played by ellen wong who is maybe the best actor in this whole movie frankly i thought she was really really good i would have liked that more i also think with her character there's like way too many jokes that they were never really okay i know <laughs> I don't know, Jason Schwartzman calling her Kung Pao Chicken. I was like, whoa, that's that's not good. And a lot of the kind of Chinese schoolgirl stuff, some of it was quite funny. Others where it was like, there's a lot of times any with her and uh, Matthew Patel. I, I don't think this film, when it does tackle race, which it doesn't do very often, um, but when it does, it doesn't handle it very well at all. Maybe that's the truth of who these characters were and a representation of how people viewed that at the time. And sure, but um, particularly with Knives having her do imagery from The Grudge, looking through the window, and then, um, you know, the Kung Pao Chicken thing and various other things they say to her throughout the film, which were, um, you know, I don't think reflected very kindly on those characters. But, um, or the filmmakers or anyone involved that that was like a decision that they made. Not to like over put the wokeness into this review. I just think it kind of feels a little emptier than the Cornetto trilogy. It feels like he is doing this style experiment he is amazing at it, Edgar Wright. He can do it like no one else can, but he doesn't have the heart to this film. And this film, you know, for a lot of people, it is about love. I've heard constantly, like, people refer to couples, like, oh, do you like Scott and Ramona or something? I just, it's never really made sense as a love story to me. I mean, you see them hook up once, sort of. Anytime they kiss, it goes to black. I don't feel like you get as much dates when they're not fighting people. It's very much into this plot. But I think Edgar Wright's a good enough of a director and they have enough stuff to work with that they're able to kind of just sort of power through and make this a really enjoyable movie. It's just an imperfect kind of film. And I think there's certain times when you have enough kind of interesting stuff happening in a film that you can sort of get away with not having a great script and a great story necessarily or a point to the story that you're telling. And Scott Pilgrim would be an amazing example of that. Now that's not to say, I don't think it means when a film doesn't adhere to like what a story should be and accomplish all these things like a checklist, that it's a bad movie. I actually don't think this is necessarily a bad movie. I think maybe it, people overrate it a lot, but it's still very enjoyable. It's still a fun movie. I enjoy Baby Driver quite a lot too, but I don't think either of them have represented it as much 
as the Coronado Trilogy, but I still find them like incredibly enjoyable, incredibly watchable films. I completely understand when watching this why people want to rewatch and rewatch Scott Pilgrim. I could totally go down the rabbit hole of just rewatching this and going like, well, maybe I need to watch it again for this review. While watching it, I, I, I get sucked into that wormhole of this movie. And this movie is like a visual wormhole of delights that you almost feel like you can't escape from because you want to watch that. I mean, that thing where Brendan Routh is like using his vegan powers with like the, the ring things. Oh my God. When he goes into shadow, like that's right out of a 60s comic book. I mean, there's so many things with the text and the, it's really really one of the best shot movies of that year and I, I think it doesn't get appreciated like Bill Pope who also shot Team America World Police Matrix uh, some of the Matrix films uh, the Spider-Man movies of Sam Raimi was Sam Raimi's DP for a while he's working at such an amazing level and Bill Pope's one of those DPs where like I, if I found out he shot a movie I would see it he's like he's a star to me I love his cinematography and this is one of his best shot films of the recent times at least he understands the visual sensor because he shot the spider-man films and it has a very like comic booky feel to it but in this they like completely let loose and letting Edgar Wright like play with all this money i mean this was like a really expensive film didn't financially work out i guess but it's amazing what you can see this director do with it and i love seeing it for that and I think sometimes it is fun at watching a film and the point of it isn't necessarily the character or the story, it's just how this director handled it. And that's like the star. And I think that's what the star of Scott Pilgrim is. Because when you look at the shots that I've seen everywhere, they're not of a particular like arc of the film, you know? I think the arc is him fighting through this baggage, but often it's not he's fighting through this baggage with Ramona. He's fighting through this baggage with these dudes who he's not dating. And girl, one girl. Like, that's not how relationships work. You don't just, like, fight their exes or something like that. Even as a metaphorical analogy, whatever, simile, I don't know, it doesn't really hold up to that, you know? But it doesn't really matter while you're watching. At a certain point, I was like, I'm having so much fun with, like, Chris Evans doing this thing or, like, having um, the Matthew Patel thing with the hipster chicks. That part of I've always found very cringy like i don't like that part i like the fight when the hipster chick girls come out i'm like what is this like and there's a lot of things that people go well if you had read the comic and i'm i hate companion piece theater kind of crap and there are a few too many moments of this film where someone goes well actually you know in the comic bloody bloody blah, 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 blah that should not be i wish edgar wright would do you know visually and how well this film is made i wish you'd make more comic book films i mean i guess that's not gonna happen anymore but he has such a sense to it like he has such a love of reintroducing that visual language to cinema that no one but maybe robert rodriguez sin city and he's not the visual stylist that edgar wright is edgar wright can push that to a degree that no one's ever pushed it before and have video games in there and have things about you know indie rock and hipsterdom and having like beck write sex bombs music and have it be produced and a lot of the score done by nigel godrich who's like radiohead's producer it was you know he had like everything at his disposal and he used it well like everything every ounce of money spent on this film is on the screen and it's just amazing it's insane how well they did that but i just don't feel like story-wise i've always felt let down by this one i remember walking away from it and go wow that was amazing but i don't i don't know as much about the story and i think there's some great gags the thing with scott's haircut with the hat there's there's just so many great funny bits in it you know well bread bread makes you fat like so many quotable things that like i can refer to and lots of you will instantly get and that's fine i don't mind that this film's imperfect i sort of find that a little endearing about it they basically went out and sort of made a cult film when i was researching reviews of this there's a point that mark kermo brought up that most cult films start out basically trying to be mainstream films and going so, kind of so off the path that they are cult films and there was this whole wave of films at the time this film got released that were trying to be cult films and the most genuine cult movies are the ones that don't try to be cult movies they try to be their own original vision and hope that that will work 
And I agree with that with Scott Pilgrim because none of them became that kind of film the way Scott Pilgrim did. And I think it instantly got a visual language that um, people in their 20s at the time were interested in and grew up with and it spoke to them on a certain level that other films visually had not. But on an emotional level, it didn't really do that. I think that's kind of why I've always found this film to be more of a kind of fun favorite, but not a film that necessarily represents a whole lot. Because Ramona, they don't do as much with her. They, they, they frankly don't, I don't really get like Scott thinks everything sucks, but it's like what his what is his real definable character that he's like kind of aloof, but you don't really know much about him. It feels like people, you know, he's kind of horrible, a bit of a bland person. To be perfectly honest, it's just the style of this film like elevates him to a certain degree that you sort of like think he's more than he is and you want to be with him. He's sort of more of a surrogate than a person in a certain degree. But um, I do like Michael Sarah did bring it to that performance and was able to kind of elevate it more. But him and Ramona Flowers, she feels like more of a manic pixie dream girl. He feels more like sort of a cipher. But, you know, you get that he, you know, with this famous with en Envy and like he's in this band and stuff. He doesn't even seem to be really interested in that. You don't really know like who he is at the core of him. And like even though he gets self-respect, he never really gets a true like personality other than being kind of an accumulation of all these things of his environment and things. I didn't really, it wasn't like, who is Scott Pilgrim? And this movie doesn't answer that. Maybe the comic does. I get that he likes the Smashing Pumpkins because he wore that shirt, but I didn't really get any love or passion from him. And that's like, you know, the reason we love everyone from Luke Skywalker to Batman to whomever is we know at their core who they are. And I don't think at Scott Pilgrim's core, he likes Ramona Flowers. That's not a personality. Like anybody has a relationship that doesn't make you a definable person. You have to have more than that. There's more that makes you up and more to relate to an audience. And I think, you know, ultimately this is just a fun, weird, crazy cult film. And I truly love it for visually what it is and how it's made but I kind of just walk away from it going like I don't have that connection that Edgar Wright does so well of going through genre and saying something about these characters about friendship about English culture this film and Baby Driver just do not have that in terms of American culture and in terms of Edgar Wright's filmography I think they feel weaker um, in terms of that in terms of storytelling because Edgar Wright I think is a great storyteller instead of this he picks more of Edgar Wright the stylist but Edgar Wright the stylist is still one of the greatest styles cinema has to offer currently so maybe that's not even that bad and I should just sort of just have fun with it and escape into the world that was Scott Pilgrim vs. the world. So if you have seen Scott Pilgrim vs. the world and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.